studios in New York City. This is Charlie Rose. Michael Lewis published Moneyball in 2003. The book told the story of how Oakland A's manager Billy Bean transformed a small market baseball team into a winning franchise. His emphasis was on rethinking value and innovating to stay competitive. Bean and the Moneyball philosophy continue to fascinate and inspire audiences around the world. The book sold more than a million copies and it was made into a movie starring Brad Pitt. Here is the trailer for the film. There are rich teams, and there are poor teams. Then there's 50 feet of crap, and then there's us. That's a dollar, man. What? Welcome to Oakland. I need more money. We're not New York. Find players with the money that we do have. I like Perez. Got an ugly girlfriend. <laughs> ugly girlfriend means no confidence. You guys are talking the same old nonsense, like we're looking for Fabio. We got to think differently. Who's Fabio? Your goal shouldn't be to buy players. Your goal should be to buy wins. And in order to buy wins, you need to buy runs. Who are you? I'm Peter Brand. First job in baseball? It's my first job anywhere. We're going to shake things up. Why don't you walk me through the board? I believe there's a championship team that we could afford because everyone else undervalues them, like an island of misfit toys. We want you at first base. I've only ever played catcher. It's not that hard, Scott. Tell him, watch. It's incredibly hard. He can't throw. But what can he do? Do you want me to speak? We're not pointing you yet. He gets on base. We are card counters at the blackjack table. We're going to turn the odds on the casino. I'm heading in. Text me to play by play. Wait, what? I don't watch the games. Billy Bean has tried to reinvent a system that's been working for years. a nice theory just not working out how long is billy bean gonna last he's proven himself right out of a job in their minds is threatening the game it's threatening the way that they do things hey daddy do you think you'll lose your job what where'd you hear that well i go on the internet sometimes don't go on the internet watch tv or talk to people you're discounting what scouts have done for 150 years what the hell am i doing is happening in Oakland. It defies everything we know about baseball. Just plain crazy. If we win with this team, we'll change the game. This better work. I'm just kidding. Joining me now, Brad Pitt, the star of the film, Jonah Hill, and other film stars, and Bennett Miller, the director. I am pleased to have all of them here to talk about this fine movie. Um, but it wasn't easy to get it made. And we started there. It took a bit of time. <laughs> you know, I mean, we had it's unconventional material. It's it's it's, it's got science and, and sabermetrics, economics at its forefront, and yeah. uh, it took a, it took a while to figure it out. Well, and, why uh, did you hang on? I mean, when they all even changing directors, you stayed in there. Uh, I, I, I couldn't let it go. I just couldn't let this book go. I got really obsessed. I'm a big Michael Lewis fan to begin with. And, and uh, this book, the, I mean, there's several reasons. There's the, the, the acting side, what I saw in the character. And he, like one of our first conversations about the film was uh, uh, it felt like a 70s film. It could feel like a, a 70s language type mm -hmm. of film that... It, 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 you know, when I started acting films, I was taught to, that we had to have a big epiphany, a character arc. And yeah. I, I, through the years, I found that to be bullshit. I, yeah. <laughs> that we don't change that much. Yeah. And what I love, and what one of our first conversations was uh, the 70s films where the, the beast at the beginning of the movie is the same beast at the end of the movie. And they don't really change. They, they may evolve a little bit or pick something up, but, but it's a world around them that changed their perspective yeah. of the world around them. And uh, became obsessed with that. Sports, never looked at it from the economic side. You yeah. think it's competition, you think it's a fair playing field. And uh, how does a small market team compete with the, these big market teams who, who buy all the talent? It's, mm -hmm. It is an unfair game. So you come on board. I mean, so what story you want to tell us? What's the story that you believe this is? Well, one of the first things that struck me when I read the book was uh, Michael Lewis pointed out that Billy Bean was somebody who came to believe that his 
that the life he was supposed to be living was somewhere else, that he, he had made a decision when he was a kid to take a turn and go down a road, and he ended up in a place that he really uh, didn't belong, that he could have taken a scholarship that had nothing to do with baseball, and he could have been doing what he should have been doing. And I just think that's a question that uh, you got to ask yourself at some point. If, if you made different decisions, if you understood things differently when you were younger, um, like what might have you done? And also still what might still be possible. And so I really I was attracted to that. Uh, and I'm also uh, was attracted to the fact that, that this is somebody who was willing to think different and he was willing to um, he was willing to challenge the world around him and to uh, take whatever his lot was in life and put it on the table and say, I'm going to bet on this thing that is a contradiction to every uh, belief that I was raised in. And uh, th that, I think that is a very big theme and a big theme today is, is, is there's more of a harmony, maybe not the best word, but a, a harmony in the way people mm. perceive like is, is divergent is um, you know political beliefs or cultural beliefs are you know represented I, I think it's all a pretty narrow bandwidth and we tend to operate within uh, you mm. know boundaries and this is somebody who just said well, like, let's settle down and just step back and look at this thing and try something new yeah. was Billy Bean involved he you want to take that uh, yes and no I mean it makes me laugh that he's still, you know, dubbed this this megalomaniac, and it's not him in any ways. He's uh, um, wisely uncomfortable with the idea of a film being made about him, but he's very giving and open and uh, savvy, competitive. Yeah. But uh, but a sharp and funny funny guy, and we spent time throughout the years, uh, and and they were pretty gracious letting us in the A's organization. And, and what were you looking for? Just a, a sense of the. Um, the, com the culture, the community, the yes, yes, the inside. You know yeah. what happens inside. You know under underneath the, the stadium. Yeah. And what what happened? I, I, it's another aspect of this movie. That it's about process, and uh, I'm, I'm I'm very interested in process, and I'm, uh, and we I think we get in there. So yeah. it was just that. It was spending time with them, and and uh, uh, getting to see uh, how they how they relate. So when you get a call and saying we want you to appear in the movie called Moneyball, Brad Pitt's going to be involved. That's not exactly how it went down. <laughs> oh, it didn't uh, happen that way? No. They I said, think, please, 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 no, please come. I think you don't, you don't need to test. You just need to show up. You're the guy. Yes. They said, uh, who do you want to hire? And I said, Brad Pitt. <laughs> no, they, I, I believe so I was... you can get Bennett William, I mean Bennett Miller. Yeah, yeah. yes. If uh, Steven... Spielberg's not available. Yeah. Then. Uh, yeah. So no, I think I was at the bottom of a laundry list of fine dramatic actors, <laughs> and uh, I had known Bennett socially and Brad socially through our friends, uh, you know, Catherine Keener and Edward right. Gordon and Sharon yeah. Robertson, and uh, you know, um, Bennett and I had talked a lot about film in the past, and I think you kind of noticed that I was interested in sort of breaking out of whatever box I was in and wanted to take my career in, in different kinds of directions, not just comedic movies. And and he let me come meet with him and we sat and we met and we talked about the character and what we both thought about him. And, you know, we both kind of agreed that uh, it was a, the character of Peter, the story, the story of Peter is that he's a guy who blends into the wall, who's never had a light shined on him. He's a Yale economist. He's a Yale economist, uh, which is probably the most polar opposite of yeah. my educational background as you can get. But, but, uh, and these guys just kept letting me have a chance, and we did like a table read, and we would meet and talk, and eventually they let me be a part of the film. Is it changing your life? I think it's changed my life tremendously. <laughs> it's given me a lot of confidence in myself as an actor to get to play with people at this level, and feel like I didn't embarrass them or the film mm -hmm. and and uh, I don't know when I wa when we were watching the trailer just now 
I, we were just watching it and I know you were listening to us talk and we all were just saying, I, I was just like, I love this movie. And it sounded like a joke, <laughs> no, I know. but I was being a thousand percent yeah. genuine that I think it's an incredible movie and I feel very lucky to be a part of it. Um, do you see, I mean, Michael was there as well, wasn't he? He okay. visited once. Yeah. yeah. I mean, do you see I any of... Um, Yourself and Billy Bean, or Billy Bean and you? Um, I felt a kinship, a kinship. certainly, yeah. with the Billy Bean described in the book, and and then upon meeting him, and uh, um, but Michael, I you know I don't think Michael thought a movie would be made, and I I think that's he how didn't he know got, how a movie could be made. I think that's how he got Billy to <laughs> sell his rights. He just said, just take the just sell the rights, and yeah. they'll never get a movie out of this. <laughs> so what was the challenge for you when you stepped into this <laughs> to tell this story? Um, <laughs> just show up. You no, know, well, you know, <laughs> yes. the, look, the, um, the there are there are the themes some that we just mentioned that were important, right, right. but they're not necessarily dramatic. You yeah. know, the book itself is uh, made out of ideas. Like the the, right. the the building blocks of the book are ideas, and it's it's uh, hard to show ideas. Yeah, and you can't build a movie on that. Yeah. You know, uh, and yet. Um, that's what was interesting. So, uh, like Mike Nichols says, any any great movie is about is about something, and then it's about something else. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, what we had was the story of Billy Bean, who is put in this uh, difficult situation, and then he mm -hmm. needs to you know win baseball games with a little money, and his team had been gutted. So that's the story that takes place up here, and. Uh, it was about finding the undercurrents and a, a way to uh, incarnate these uh, mm -hmm. ideas that um, I know Brad and I were both attracted to from the first time we met about the thing. Billy Bean is a private character. He doesn't express a lot of these mm -hmm. things. You know, like he doesn't go for the game as we saw in the trailer. Yeah, he he doesn't. He, there's one line in the movie where he's confronted by Pete where he is sort of forced to say, look, this is my deal. You know, yeah. I'm 44 years old and, you know, the high school diploma and a daughter I'd like to uh, be able to pay for college. You know, yeah. and I get it, and, but I'm like, I'm, I'm going to see this thing through. It's the only time he mentions his personal feelings, and yet you need to feel it throughout the movie. And it's how do you coordinate yeah. that? You know, it's a very it's a it's a very high coup exercise fitting something into the length of a movie. Mm -hmm. You know, a, a film is I think comparatively handicapped to uh, like a, a novel or something like that. But Here's what Brad said about it. <laughs> I'm quoting you now. The film is about how we value things, how we value each other, how we value ourselves, and how we decide who's a winner based on those values. The film questions the very idea of how to define success. It places great value on this quiet, personal victory, the victory that's not splashed across the headlines and necessarily results in trophies, but that for being became a kind of personal Everest. At the end of the day, we all hope that's what we are doing. What We all hope that what we are doing will be of some value that will mean something, and I think that is this character's quest. Yes. Well said, sir. Yes, well said. <laughs> that was you, wasn't it? Thanks for, thanks for picking this up for me. Uh, no, but that is, the, to, for me, it was, uh, was one of the many and major themes of, of the film is value yeah. and how we value each other and value ourselves mm. based on what is a success and what is a, what is a failure. These baseball players that were not getting an opportunity, I'm sure is, were defined as failures. I'm sure they felt mm. that in, to some degree. Suddenly, someone comes along and says, "No, you have value. Mm -hmm. We can use you. We're gonna, we're gonna, and use you this way. We not only can use you, we need you, and we need you, and it's gonna work. Yeah. And um, and suddenly, these uh, uh, these guys see themselves differently. He, Billy Bean's situation. Here's a here's a kid comes out of high school. He's told he's the next coming, right? And it doesn't pan out. Yeah. Now he's dubbed uh, a washout. Um, actually, he does something kind of incredible. He he quits. Which, uh, which is a bit unheard of, and uh, um, bravely uh, goes down another path to try something else. But he could see himself as a failure. He could be dubbed a failure or identified as a failure, but it's those very missteps that lead mm -hmm. to another success. And it'll be that success that leads to another failure. They're, they're, it's just in, intricately yeah. entwined, and, and I'm okay with that. Uh, 
the beauty of it for me is that, is that quiet victory. It's mm -hmm. something that, that I don't think we've yeah. given up. And, and he knows it in the end. Um, or not. No, I'm sure he's still wrestling with it. I yeah. still wrestle to some degree, and I'm, yeah. you feel it sometimes. And, and uh, question it the next day. That's what gives you the impetus to, 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 yeah. keep, to keep going. But I, re I recall, I think it was the 2000 Olympics, and I don't know much about gymnastics, but I was watching one of the floor routines, and it was a Russian superstar, and she was supposed to take it, take, take the, take the, take the gold. And she came out of the gate, and she fell, and, and ended up in a mess, in, in on her face. And she picked herself up, and the announcers were going, "Oh my God! Oh no! Oh, she's just lost the gold. She's throwing away the gold. This is a tragedy, travesty." And she gets up, and she, you know, these routines are long, two minutes, three minutes, I don't know. And for me, it was one of the most amazing and noble yeah. things I had seen, to see her finish this routine, but, but sublimely. Yeah. And all the, the rhetoric that night was just about how she, how she chunked it. And I looked in the paper the next day to see if anyone was commenting on it. I didn't, I didn't find anything. For me, that was a... There was great nobility in it. Yeah, it's a quiet victory. And the triumph of the human spirit. Absolutely. Yeah. There is this story about how Billy Bean can take a group of uh, people who others don't value and make them into a winning team. Tell, explain that to me. This well, is right from Michael's book. <clears throat> well, I think what you're talking about is sabermetrics. Yeah. Right? So, it is. Yes. <laughs> yes. Uh, which is basically a way of of finding value in players that others don't see value in right. based on on-base percentage and that stat and that stat alone. Yeah. So my character Peter Brand believes in the studies of this guy Bill James who right. was uh, a security guard at a sausage factory was it pork and uh, beans. a pork, pork and beans, beans factory yeah, right. and and yeah. he had this sort of the same thing. Yes, yeah. exactly. Yeah. So he 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 had these theories about on-base percentage and how that you know yeah. How that affected players, and if they were getting on base was the thing. That's all that matters, basically. Yeah. Right. And well, okay, we come back to that. Yeah. Right. Well, that's basically, you know, he <laughs> gave you like nineteen books. Uh, he gave me a bill. <laughs> you read like the, one chapter. No, the he first, does this too. That's not true. Your books on the set. That's not true. So you he gave, gave me nineteen books about what? That's not true. Yeah. But he gave me a Bill James <laughs> book that was this big, and I and I read it. Oh, the Bill James book. Yeah. Yes, the Bill James book. Did yeah. you really read it? Did yes, you really I read, read it. it. You read it. <laughs> I skipped a page every did now you, and then. It was like 5,000 pages. Did, did no. you see the book report again? No, I did. I did. I, I did yeah. my research on, on these facts. But basically, you know, using these new techniques, you know, yeah. Peter convinces Billy, Brad's character, that right. that using them, we can have a more effective team with way less money than these other teams. Right. And... He's bold enough to exercise these practices, and together, I said, you know, I always thought like Billy was the bazooka and Peter was the ammunition, and together they burst through the wall. That's yeah. a hundred-year-old wall of baseball thinking. Now you look back at this and you think, my God, you had so much good things to work for. I mean, you had the relationship between the two of them. You had a theory, mm -hmm. you know, you had a sense of somebody coming off of uh, uh, looking for his last great chance, even though he'd given up on one, mm -hmm. you know, one great pursuit. Mm -hmm. All this, I mean, how could you miss? You know what? Why? I wish. I wish, <laughs> I wish I'd been more there to tell you this I wish in more the beginning. people had thought, you know, the way you're thinking now, Charlie, in the beginning, because um, because Amy Pascal, who at Sony, uh, at Sony who right. um, who decided to roll the dice with it, had to go at it alone because uh, that was not the you know popular conception of the of the perception of the film at the time and uh, couldn't find a financial partner in another studio or anything like that to, to do it with with Brad involved and with you involved there is, there, and the, with a story by Michael Lewis involved they still couldn't see their way to a movie right. is that it it's it's a very there's a money ball it's challenging material there's a yeah. money ball principle here which is that the you know the perceived ingredients uh, to what makes up a success uh, we're not here. Baseball movies, they don't play abroad. And right. In fact, they actually don't do so well here. And that's, that was, that's probably the big curse. And, mm. and ultimately, it is... It is but but you, I assume you talked about it as not a baseball movie, but, but a story about values and about 
mm. dreams and about relationships yeah. and that. It's not about baseball per se. It's about right. these other things. Right. It's not a great pitch to start out with. It's not about <laughs> dot, <laughs> dot, dot, dot. Exactly. You know. Is that not what you want? But I felt yeah. the same way you did. Absolutely. Yeah. I, was like, I was like, yes. Well, there obviously was, Brad thought the same thing, too. Yeah. This yeah. Is, but not to deny the degree of difficulty. Yeah. You know, you know, uh, I mean, it... it I think it's one of the things, it's the main thing that gets overlooked and when, or not understood when, when viewing a film, degree of difficulty, and then tone. Mm -hmm. Because the tone of a film can go in a hundred different directions. Yeah. And it's to Bennett's credit and Bennett's background, I think, that, that honed this film and, and let it straddle an authentic feel with real, with mm -hmm. people, yeah, with baseball nice. insiders, very uh, experienced and smart people from baseball, and yet, uh, and straddle this, you know, a uh, film. That, um, the bit you have to to uh, uh, invent, mm. and um, I think it's uh, great elegan elegance and flawless and mm. flawlessness. And I'm, I, I don't think I can't say enough about it. Let's take a look. This will give some sense of tone as well. Hi, Mr. Shot. It's uh, Peter Brand. I apologize for putting you on hold earlier. Billy asked me to call you back. He's on another line. Tell me, one two hundred twenty-five thousand. Billy says he needs $225,000 for Ricardo Rincon. Please. Yes, I, I added the please at the end. Uh, okay, let me, hold on one second, please. Tell him I'll pay for him. But when I, when I sell him back for twice the amount next year, I keep the money. Okay, so Billy says he'll pay for Rincon himself. But when he sells him for more money next year, he's keeping the profit. Okay, thank you very much. We'll call you back. Thank you. Come on! Come on! <laughs> what did you say while you were watching that? What's that? I what did remember. you say? <laughs> oh, I could watch it all. Yeah, I could watch you do that all day long. <laughs> People, I, I feel bad that about. To me sometimes. You feel bad about. I feel bad about. You know, uh, <laughs> they just go like this. Sometimes people will do that to me on the street, <laughs> and it makes me laugh. I, I, I feel bad about making a joke that uh, like you didn't read nineteen books. He, this guy I worked did a so, lot of this stuff. Was, oh yeah, we worked. Yeah, we worked so. Uh, Jonah worked uh, so hard on all of this stuff. And uh, anyway, where'd you come up with that? It just happened. It literally just happened once. I, think. I don't know. We did like 40 takes of that. Oh, really? <laughs> I apparently wasn't there for the filming at this point. No. I, I mean, I don't remember. It must have just, we must have, I don't, I don't remember coming up with it at a certain yeah. point, you know? I don't know. It just maybe once we started doing it, it felt natural. But I do want to say I really did do a lot of research for this film. <laughs> we, we I read a now. lot more than I'd ever want to read about baseball statistics. <laughs> Are you buying that, aren't you, Brad? I yeah. am buying You're it. buying it. I'm buying it. Yeah. You, yeah. Yeah. you learned so much about right baseball. Right. Yeah. <laughs> One didn't work without the other. Yeah. And, but that and gives you something to, to abs, if you're in sync with another character. Everything. Everything. Gives you everything. And it was such a, it's it's a brave performance, like study in reserve. It's antithetical yeah. to an actor's... Uh, 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 instinct. In, yeah, yeah. Well, no, it, and I got to say, it was really, I think it was a smart instinct and from the get-go to, to pull it back like that when mm -hmm. Billy Bing is gregarious and, mm -hmm. and vociferous as he is, that... Mm -hmm. uh, uh, it's Which an interesting moment. point. Tell me how you thought about what he just described, in terms of how you knew that you had to bring what you had to bring to this character because of who you were playing against and with. Well, yeah, well, as I was starting to say earlier, we said he blends into the wall, right. and then it's the story about what happens when the person who blends into the wall gets a spotlight shined on them for the first time, yeah. and they see what responsibility is like, and they see what life is like when they're not just the person in the background. And I think Billy, I immediately read the book and was like, oh, Billy, you know, when we read the script too, is just Billy is everything that Peter's not, and vice, and vi and vice versa. versa. Yeah, so right, together yeah. they, com they, they create this really whole entity. And that to me was a beautiful story and something that I thought I could bring a lot to. And there's one scene in particular that when I, my favorite scene I've ever shot in a movie is in this, this movie and also the most difficult scene, and it's only about 30 seconds long, which is uh, when I have to trade uh, Pena, go tell him he's been, he's been traded to another right. team because I think it's really rare in a movie that you see a person grow up in the course of a 30-second scene because 
he's he's having all his ideas utilized. It's all been fun up until this point. He's been plucked from obscurity. He's been given this opportunity. All yeah. everything he's wanted is getting um, utilized by a powerful entity. And then it's the first time he goes, "Oh wait, no, your your ideas have consequences, mm-hmm. and you've negatively affected a man's life by your ideas. Now go tell him that you've negatively affected his life." And that to me was really like a un- unlocking type of scene for mm-hmm. for me as an actor of like what this guy mm-hmm. is going through. Roll tape. Here it is. All right, you got a minute? Yeah. Take a seat. <clears throat> You can't start Pena first tonight. You'll have to start Hatterberg. Yeah, I don't want to go 15 rounds, Billy. The lineup card is mine, and that's all. Okay, the lineup card is definitely yours. I'm just saying you can't start Pena first. Well, I am starting him at first. I don't think so. He plays for Detroit now. He traded Pena. Well, I mean, the fabulous Philip Seymour Hoffman, right. who who really came in and the old friends of Bennett's right. and, uh, since college, correct? Right. Yeah, yeah. Well, we we talked about that, that relationship last time you were here. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, came in and really did us a solid and becomes that, I mean, he's, he's ferocious. He becomes that obstacle to, that yeah. he got to get, oh, he can't get past that impenetrable wall to get the ideas across. Right. And, I mean, Phil just set it up for us, like, like no one's business. Yeah. It feels so real with him, too. That a scene like that where he's really upset with us, it makes you feel bad because he's such a good actor that you actually. I think he was upset. With him. Well, I think he just hated Brad and I. Maybe. <laughs> no, I <don't laughs> no I'm kidding. So. I'm totally kidding. Um, but you know what I'm saying? When he was really yeah, upset, yeah, it, it yeah. just it made you feel. You felt that kind of anger and hatred towards you. You talked about Brad. Another thing you said about uh, Bennett was that he brought the human element to the film. Tell me what you meant by that. That Bennett did. Yeah. Well, it, you know, I, the book itself is dealing with uh, this time and place. You know, they, they started in actuality. We started the film like it's a new idea. Right. They right. actually started in the late 90s um, implementing these ideas and trying them out. Um, that it, I, I was arguing against any kind of backstory and family story. And uh, Bennett, and w- very wisely, was, was adamant about... Um, Grounding him in that way, I, I, mm-hmm. I guess. I, I think Bennett could... With his daughter and... Yes, could explain and, it. Could explain probably it. explain it better, but... What but, did you think was necessary for the film to have? Um, well, I think... I mean, I like sports movies, and I, I think that the good sports movies never really are about sports at the end of the day. You know, there is, oh, there's always something else there. Yeah. And uh, what, I, uh, what, I, what attracted me to the film in the first place were these more personal issues, and um, it was, you know, how do you how do you weave these things together, and how do you make them, you know? Yeah, war movies are that way too, aren't they? I mean, yeah. in the end, it's about relationships and mm-hmm. courage and, mm-hmm. and a whole series mm-hmm. of values, mm-hmm. rather than about who won this battle or that battle, that yeah. kind of thing, right? right? Yeah. Yes, exactly. Yeah. The other interesting thing about this is you have this pursuit of 20 victories in a row, mm-hmm. and that gives you a certain drama and a certain way to tell that story. Yeah. Well, there, I mean, it's, it's, a, it's a baseball movie on the one hand, and the other hand, it's, it's really, um, it, it kind of puts the you know, genre on its head, and it, and it does tease uh, some of the tropes that you, know, you might expect, yeah. but the moment... Uh, it gets close to them. They they get put on their head, and uh, this it does have a, the film does have a climax, and it d- does give you one of those moments. But that's not the uh, resolution of the film. Uh, the the film itself does not offer the traditional you know carried off on the shoulders, champagne trophies, whatever exactly. you know kind of thing. The 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 triumph at the end is a very quiet internal not so you know bright burning uh short you know mm. thing is but a quieter i think deeper uh and more meaningful uh, a little epiphany you know a, sh- a little shifting of perspective what brad said is right he's the same guy at the end of the movie but i do think he is he's realized that the that the adventure that he's been on was really 
he thought he was trying to win baseball games, but it, it brought him to a place that has a, that offered a, a personal re revelation. Uh, so the, what's the revel what's the revelation that he well, that, a, that he had a chance to or has well, a chance it's a to? Film, it's a you know the the whole film is about value judgments. Right. You know he, from the time he's like seventeen, he's like, do you want a scholarship to college or you want to go pro? And since then, it's just it's value calls, and it's like this player versus that player. This you know this worth this right, much right, right, it, right. like all movie these wax on value, wax off right, exercises, right. and then at the end of the movie, uh, he arrives at a place that's very similar to the place he was when he was a kid, which is a very big check on the table and a very tempting offer, right. but has now been seasoned with experience and can uh, apply. You know the wisdom, the, di the, wisdom and the, the wisdom. discipline, uh, and something happens at the end of the movie. A tiny little thing, just a little crystal of salt, is put, dropped in, and the whole film. Uh, the hope is that it, it crystallizes, and there's a decision that he makes, which is very eccentric, uh, but very personal, where he is able to walk away from what he might have uh, dreamed to have. Yeah. That's the that's the that's the small thing. It's just realizing, you know, yeah. I'm fighting, 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 fighting for something. Well, it's also but, but, the idea but here of, it is. Somehow wanting something all your life, and then all of a sudden, when you get there, deciding that there's something more important. Yeah, people tease me about it, but it's it's it is kind of like the Wizard of yeah, Oz. Yeah, no, you say that. You know, it's it's like you know, it's like this this kind of like King Arthur, Wizard of Oz type yeah. journey yeah. where you you're dislocated from your life, from the place you're supposed to be, and you're given some impossible task, like bring me the broomstick or get the holy grail, yeah. and you go through all sorts of difficulty to do it, and you know you bring it to the wise person, there's always a wise person at the end. It so happens that this story, just the way it unfolded, it happened the same way, and you go to the wise person and you say, okay, like, give it to me. And, right. uh, and then that's the moment something happens and you realize you already know it, you know. Your wife is coming in to see us today. Uh, she just directed a film. Mm. Do you want to do that? Do I want to do that? Do I yeah. want to direct? Yeah. No. No, I have no desire <laughs> to. I, one, I think well, but, just, you're, but you're interested in I all of this. People, there are do, movies I, that you want to see made. You know, you're, do, you're engaged I, with him in terms of tone. I do. You, I love the directors. It's Ultimately, it's the, the director's voice. Well, you don't want to do it. No, I know me too well. I'm too much. I'm too obsessive about getting it right. It would take. It would consume me. It would take me away from my kids, yeah. and I want. I really want to spend more time with my kids, and and I enjoy putting the pieces together, and I enjoy developing the story a lot. And I just think there's other people doing it, and it, it, I would not benefit from it, and I nor would the craft benefit from me doing it. I just don't see that. it as necessary. I, you buy that for I him, but I don't. I don't. I don't know. You know. I, I don't know. I mean, Brad, you're. I mean, you're very designy and have yeah, he's designy. And yes, a lot. You're kind of garish like it. There is. There is. I mean, but yes. in, in no, a way, he's designy. You are. In, in, it's well said. It's kind of designy. Design in, 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 in a way that I'm sure. Yes. Well, yeah. He does. I mean, it's his passion. His architect. It's. 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 I don't think. I don't think he makes a big show out of it. But um, yeah. you're, he, he's. A, he doesn't want to hear it. From, but he's. A, he's yeah. like. He's a very gifted fella in that right. regard. And I have watched. We've done a little hanging out, and I've watched him. You know, how he kind of tweaks a couch yeah. or this yeah. or that or right. whatever. And um, I, I could see you losing your mind, but I could also see it a great becoming work. some. Yeah, like I. I yeah. think you. I would. I'd like to channel those energies into acting. Some, well, no, some art, other art, things. Art things. I, yeah, maybe something designy. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, you're doing a bit of that in New Orleans, aren't you? Yeah, a little bit. I'm playing a little of that. Yeah. And uh, I'm getting. You know, I'm, I'm getting older, so I'd like to try a few other things. Like. Uh, designy stuff. Not designy things? Come yeah. on, what's a designy thing for you? No, I, I mean, I'm curious about uh, an art that's more autonomous. This is a... Collaborative. You know, this was a beautiful collaboration, and and I, I appreciate that. At the same time, I, I find myself, as I get older, long, I don't know if you have this yet, but longing for something that's... or challenging myself that's completely autonomous, that it's just me... Mm -hmm. 
if it succeeds, it succeeds. In my eyes, or it fails, it fails. But it, I'm completely 100% responsible for it. Yeah, writing so is obviously that. Writing would be that. I don't have that talent either. Or, or I don't it's, have... Uh, I can't. It's poor, about, no. it's poor about the absence of what? No, it's but not I, true. I would... I think you have a talent of writing. Well, yeah. thank you. Yeah. yeah. Well, you... Go <laughs> Go ahead. Um, but something, something else, yeah. uh, you know, the arts, something else in the arts. And Tell me about the kids and a sense of what it brings to you and how, how it changes you and what, I mean. Oh, man. Um, it's just, it's the, just the greatest delight. I just never anticipated um, a kind of love like this yeah. and, a, and, the, and the, the, the nobility, again, I feel, and the responsibility mm -hmm. of showing them around and preparing them. And just the, the joy they bring me, and and um, I mean, it, you can only talk really about it to other parents because otherwise, understand. people are, you just yeah. it's annoying. But I didn't, I did not understand the depths of that kind of love and joy. It's just been the family's just what Angie and I built. It's just been the the uttermost life changing important thing that I that I've been involved in. That's the best I can do. Next to what well, money. Next to what money. No, but I mean, it, 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 I know you're saying it's the best you can do, but you, the, the, the way you say it gives it certain nobility, too. It, but what's interesting, and, and not to go deeper on this, but because it is what it is and clear, and clear comes directly, directly from the heart, it is also the, to see these kids, because they come from such different places. Uh, yeah. I, I mean, that's, the, that's my vision of the world. That's the yeah. world I want to see. I don't see this my high school is better than your high school kind of mentality yeah, yeah. that we're that we we grow up with uh i i i want to see a world with no lines and mm -hmm. at the end of the day we're all we're all after the same thing it just we get cluttered with the other two percent and, and suddenly that becomes the wall that separates us and we become isolationists not eight percent of us is the oh, same. I, well i mean we all have the wants the, the same wants and desires yeah. and and you know to, to better ourselves and 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 to better our families and and to live peacefully i mean Anyway, yeah. um, back to this movie in terms of what you wanted to do with it, in, in terms of making it. How talk to me a bit about sort of mixing the sort of real from the fiction, the sense of how you would tell the story using, you know, actual film, that right. kind of thing. Um, well, again, I, I think that I think that the the themes of the movie that were attractive um, to me to us. Um, are are not as spectacular uh, as 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 a marketing department might want. You know, they're 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 real, and and the film kind of gets at some of the guarded feelings, and secrets that everybody has. You know, just some personal stuff. And uh, to to do it, I just felt you you need to be grounded in the in the real and just the the, the thing had to have a, a veracity you know mm, to it the truth uh, you, yeah you have to you know believe it i i think it, i can't remember who said it uh probably nichols again but uh you know movies are like people you you trust them or you don't mm. and i wanted people to know that this happened you know there was the, there was a man who there was did a man this, this all of this happened, and it's and yeah. some things that happened in the movie are kind of unbelievable. Uh, yeah. You know, this the this this team that had the second lowest payroll in baseball and had just been gutted, put together a roster of guys who uh, many of whom had been uh, dismissed, and they end up uh, not just um, winning; they end up not losing for yeah. a stretch that just is imagination defying and to win 20 games in a row which had never been done in the American League before is uh, unbelievable and to and part of the challenge was to present it in such a way that uh, said no it happened this actually happened you're watching a movie but this you know it's truthful it's it's real and so the movie does integrate um, in its own way real footage roll tape here's another scene Take a look. Scotty H. Yo, what's up, DJ? Cooking machine. <laughs> How you liking first base, man? It's uh, it's coming along, picking it up. You know, tough transition, but I'm still, I'm feeling, I'm starting to feel better with it. Yeah. Yeah. What's your biggest fear? A baseball being hit in my general direction. <laughs> That's funny. Seriously, what is it? No, seriously, that is.
Well, hey, good luck with that. Give us a sense of being in this movie for you, for being with Brad, being directed by Bennett, mm -hmm. having those other characters there. I mean, what did you learn? What did you see? What, did, what was it that you will tell people about having seen the movie and seen your performance and having people cheering about what you did? I mean, the whole experience, and it's bizarre saying it in front of these guys, but yeah. is incredibly, <laughs> incredibly surreal, I yeah. would say. You know, when I got the phone call about the movie, then when I got the phone call, I remember I was standing when I was told I was accepted to play the part you know it felt like I had gotten into Harvard or something you know it really did feel <laughs> it's bigger than Harvard <laughs> it just felt it felt very momentous yeah. you know even from the moment that it was that I knew I was playing the part it felt like something very special and it felt like not to sound uh, like I'm talking about myself but it sounded like an involvement in my like an evolution like in my career and my maturation as a as a mm. person that I was getting to do something completely different than I was ever given an opportunity mm. to do like I think I made so many movies about being immature yeah right <laughs> yeah, I mean you have to really understand that my friends so uh -huh. yeah exactly, exactly. So so but, I, but, yes. but you have to understand I've, I've, I've you know the early part of my career and the films I'm really really proud of yeah. um, are about being immature and not figuring out how to take that next step and then I get this movie, and it felt, I mean, you look at, look at me. I mean, I look totally different. I, I, you know, it was a very maturing thing yeah. for me. It felt like I had been stamped. It felt like um, it's time to grow up. It's time to, you know, yeah. be bold and, and, and change, you know, and not change, like leave everything behind, but change and evolve. Right. And it's just been the most beautiful. It's been a really beautiful experience yeah. for me. That's really sweet. It is. Yeah. Sweet. Yeah. It is. And sincere. Like he's very. Yeah, he's, of he's, he's one of the most genuine people I've come across, and I and I, and I, I so appreciate that. It wasn't that big of a deal to us. I mean, it yeah. it yeah. seemed like a natural fit. Yeah. It seemed like equals yeah. from our perspective. What these guys have been doing. You, Danny McBride. Uh, uh, Judd, yeah, Judd. you can go. You can go down the down the roster. It's been. I've seen the biggest innovations or the biggest jumps or the, or the most exciting stuff happen from what these guys have been doing. Jonah, when I say these guys, was, came out as a comedy guy or we dubbed him as a comedy guy. Mm -hmm. And of course, you gotta sh of course you're much more than that. But, but these guys have been doing some really rebellious stuff, yet gr gr um, grounding it in this humanity that I think is, that be, sometimes becomes painful. And, and uh, Russell Brand would be another one. And, mm -hmm. Anyway, I, was, I can't say I enough about yeah. it. These are the films that I, I've, I spent I more time watching. I was saying the yeah, stuff like, that, was, that was previously was immature work. Yeah. I meant as playing an immature person. No, it's, to, it's, uh, yeah, pos yeah. it's possible to be put in a box as an actor if you do something that gets categorized a couple of times, like mm -hmm. play a role like that. Um, and it could be hard to break out of it, you know, get somebody to give you that shot. But from our perspective, it was, it was not. It was uh, people are like, wow, wow. Would you? And by the way, the blogs were not very optimistic about, you know, <laughs> projecting the outcome of uh, this thing. But it outcome uh, of the movie or the outcome of, of the casting. Well, well, I think the whole thing. But yeah. but specifically, there there was you know some chatter about you know Jonah being cast in it. And to me, it was like you were so ripe for this thing, and yeah. like, it was like we are so uh, lucky to have you know yeah. him bring his he's like you're a big gun Jonah <laughs> like you haven't totally totally realized it at that point now yeah. he's kind of realizing no he's he'll, I can't yeah. imagine him uh, yeah. getting too heady about anything really but yeah. uh, you know from from our perspective it was uh, you were so ripe to do something and uh, I like Brad I think sometimes uh and you take from comedy like Jerry Lewis and King of Comedy it's like one of the great great stunning like out of nowhere performances and uh, I, I, I can imagine going to do all sorts of stuff all mm. sorts of stuff and hopefully you get those you get those chances mm. you, you s there's, a, there's a thing here that, that I find interesting which you sort of said those are the kind of movies I like to watch um, is there a place for the kind of challenge that Billy Bean felt, the fact that he thought he could change baseball. I mean, are there films that you think you'd like to make that might change 
Uh, I, I certainly want to contribute. And this is on my. This is on my mind. I feel a ticking clock. I feel very fortunate to be in the game, and 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 while I'm here, uh, that I want to contribute something to it, and and whatever the zeitgeist is at our time, whatever shape it takes, you know, I want to help. I want. I want to shave a corner of it, or, or shape it in some way. I want to contribute. Otherwise, why am I here? Um, I felt early on when I start, when I was starting out in a couple of roles that that there were kind of plug-in component roles you could have put any of us in, and and, and it just occurred to me probably I don't know about a decade ago that 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 um, you got to start telling personal stories. You got to mm. start I, contributing is the best way I can, mm. I can explain it. Mm. And, Want to add something to it at the end of the day? Wanted, wanted to have had value. Mm -hmm. Right, that means something. Yeah. Finally, there's this before we go. Uh, this is Michael Lewis, who's a frequent, uh, is a friend of this program, and this is Michael talking about Moneyball and talking about Billy. Here it is. The gist of it that this team that has no money is able to compete only by finding people who other teams have found defective and putting them together into this unit of underdogs that has become a just juggernaut during the regular season for the last four years. And this is the this opposite is, end of the Yankee experience. It is. I mean, they, the Yankees can go and buy whatever they need. And, and if they make mistakes, it doesn't matter because they can bury them. You know, if they, if they spend $10 million on a Cuban pitcher who can't pitch uh, in the big leagues, it doesn't matter because they got hundreds of millions or more after that. This is a team that's got $40 million to spend on baseball players as opposed to 140 or 150. And so they've got to be absolutely right with all of it or, or it all falls apart. And it's forced them to rethink the game of baseball. And just the idea that in a, something as hoary and traditional as baseball, it was possible for there to be innovation and new knowledge was astonishing. Here is what Michael also says about Billy Beam. He said, there are two avenues of escape. Once you recognize the predicament, talking about what's going to happen to Billy Beam, there are two avenues of escape. Once you recognize the predicament that you're basically doomed, that you, you are basically doomed in Oakland. One is to become the San Jose A's, to try and go from a small market team to a big market team. The second avenue of escape is to find another industry where those kind of inefficiencies still exist. You know, to be able to look at some. That's interesting mm -hmm. to me. Well, I, apparently, I, and I know that uh, Billy's very interested in uh, soccer. Yeah. And uh, they've been been taking a good hard look at this. But the real irony in it for, like for the A's, they're back, it's, you know, the genie's out of the bottle, they're back to square one. Yeah. Now the rich teams can yeah. can employ these same tactics and still buy all the talent, so. <laughs> That's right, so no, the, the, exactly. So right. they, had yeah. a, they had a window. <laughs> but. And are looking for the, the next inefficiency discovery. Mm. Yeah. I mean, that's actually, a, that's an interesting idea for me, the search for inefficiencies, where you can look at some circumstance and say, if in fact they did it differently, it would present a real opportunity to change something big, you know. Mm. Well, yeah, just well, asking the question, why, I mean, this is something like Paul presented to us that, I think he called it the naive question. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Was, it, if, if, if we were to begin today doing this, playing this game, is this how we would do it? Yeah. You know, what made sense 150 years ago does not make sense for us now. Yeah. Um, it, it's it's a, see how it, I love that it's idea. A big idea. It, it is the idea of thinking, of clearly thinking from the beginning. Which has its application in baseball, and it might have a more application, uh, a, a more meaningful application in something like uh, filmmaking. That's why I'm keep asking the yeah. question. Yeah. Whereas, Where might it be? Right. Where, well, and the difference in filmmaking is not simply uh, the market of it and where, where are we going to find the next subject, you know, the other ingredients that are going to keep on attracting audiences but um, you know, the film is, is a medium that communicates like no other, you know, you can communicate in a way with this, with this very powerful medium uh, and if, if what you're looking for is to just um, to recycle you know, uh, formulas that are believed to attract audiences as, as opposed to uh, taking new ground in a kind of exploration um, in, into, you know, what it means to be alive today in our mm -hmm. culture and, mm -hmm. and to recognize the, uh, how that, the, the vitality of that is attractive, that if you make a movie that, you know, that it cuts deep and is is relevant to uh, an audience. They will come see it. 
you know, and it and it that's never really been something that uh, you could gamble on. It's like it's, it's not like saying let's make a crude comedy, let's do you know it's action thing. It's 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 not a genre, you know, like a truth seeking, truth speaking, you know, exploration of a film. That's not a genre that you you emulate, you know. But every so often. Um, somebody comes through and cracks something open and, and people show up and you scratch your head and wonder why and you try to replicate the ingredients of it. But I, I think that there is, you know, a paradigm shift that could happen in, uh, you know, amongst those who decide what, what gets financed that could recognize that. Uh, What's interesting to me is, is storytelling, you know, and hopefully that we are now at a time in which there's so many different ways to tell stories, so many different kinds of uh, platforms to tell stories mm -hmm. on, that somehow more people will have an opportunity, mm -hmm. you know, to tell stories and tell this kind of quiet personal story you're talking about, mm -hmm. you know, that it doesn't necessarily have to be through the same kind of system. Absolutely. You know, that we yeah. may be facing a time. And the digital camera could change exactly. as it comes down. That's my point. I, yeah. Yeah. It's it's iPhone. Yeah. You could shoot me on an iPhone tomorrow. Yeah. You know? it, it, well, you could be shooting. Yeah. That's right. Yeah. It, it is, yeah. and uh, how it's how it's going to unfold, and 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 you know how uh, the the shifting distribution um, and the increased amount of noise as well uh, is going to affect what is created and and, and what voices rise or reach people. Uh, is, I don't think anyone, nobody has that figured out yet. You know, or people thinking how do we monetize that and how do we. It's 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 changing so fast, and uh, I think it's not going to be somebody kind of like thinking about it. I think it's just going to happen, you know, just exactly. in an evolutionary type of way. It's just it'll present itself. Why did it take you so long to make another movie? <clears throat> well, um, you were here last, like two thousand five or six. Yeah, it's now two thousand eleven. You know, I I I committed myself to a film that uh, that that didn't happen that I. I Kind of didn't believe that it wasn't going to happen, and just kind of stuck with it and stuck right. with it. And uh, but also, it's you know, it's it's hard to uh, for, for me to get excited enough to uh, subject myself to the misery of making a movie. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I think Brad, Brad and I. I think the, the, the thing that keeps Brad out of the director's chair is is, is, is what he is, saw. Is, what he saw you go through. Is, is, <laughs> like we have that. I think we have the same nature like that. It's it's yeah. like you get in it, and it's like everything else goes away and uh, so but how do you explain our mutual friend George Clooney no one no one does better no one, George has got it so wired he's got it so figured out how to how to how to get interesting projects done and enjoy it at the same yeah, time indeed. I, I it's I don't have that makeup but it's, <laughs> happy it's, it's a, it's a happy talent and yeah, yeah he's happy. I, I, I but admire do you it. think he enjoys it as much as he enjoys acting or more I think he enjoys all of it. He's just yeah, he's that's the just, great thing. Isn't it? Yeah, and and the people who work with him enjoy it. He you creates know? a yes, happy he, yes, absolutely. Yeah, yeah. I also, but I think he's deadly serious about it too. Oh, he know? clearly is. Yeah. yeah, and good at it. Yeah, really good at it. For real. Yeah. Uh, thank you. Thank you. Congratulations. Charlie. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Charlie. Look forward to glad to have you at the table and you, my friend. Yeah. Thanks. Nice good luck. You again.